And Camilla, welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. How are you today? Thank you, Melissa, for having us. And we are very well uh, today. Thank you. <laughs> and where are you joining us from? We are in uh, Brittany in France at the moment, a beautiful, magical region of France with a lot of uh, like uh, standing stones um, from Lithic times. And it's, it's really beautiful here. It sounds really beautiful and peaceful. Well, you are two of the founders of the Hero Tribe. Can you tell us a little bit about the Hero Tribe and how it got started and what you do? Um, yes. Um, yeah. As, um, as you mentioned, we are two of them because um, actually uh, um, we are three co-founders or founders of the Hero Tribe. Uh, so the uh, one missing is Joanna, who unfortunately had another appointment and couldn't make it to this podcast. And um, well, the three of us, we met about uh, 10, nine, 10 years ago um, while well, actually being in Vietnam. That's where we met. Um, I lived and worked there for four years and Sasha and Joanna were also uh, traveling and offering um, Qigong classes in Vietnam, where I joined one of these uh, wonderful classes and met the two, and um, we became friends. And we noticed that we have the same passion on, uh, well, actually pursuing uncomfortable things, kind of bringing us out there into the world, experiencing a life, trying new things, and and connecting with other people. And um, we founded the Hero Tribe as our vision or vision for humanity as well is that people start acknowledging themselves again as the main character of their life story. Because what we see is that when people really act from their soul and their heart, it radiates out to their environment, to the people around them. And um, yeah, we believe our world can be a better place if people, um, yeah, really live out their dreams and visions that they are having. Absolutely. I would second that a hundred percent. So how did each of you get to where you are to be a part of the hero tribe? What brought you to that place? Yeah, maybe, um, I start with my personal journey because it also kind of, um, yeah, created this this trajectory for the hero child um, because I'm in this realm of um, movement training uh, from the beginning of my life. I um, started martial arts when I was uh, very young and then I had the calling to go to Asia and uh, study in temples and monasteries. I studied Japanese history and language at university um, and then went to Japan first and I I got into this really sometimes uncomfortable uh, situations and I was seeking this master student relationship that you can see in, in a lot of movies, um, this approaching the mentor, um, how it would be called in the hero's journey. Um, and, um, yeah, I could, I could find for myself what I was looking for. And then, um, I came into the position to bring it back in a way to the Western world. And um, to a very different lifestyle also. My lifestyle was always very different when I was in Asia and then came back. And I struggled very often to integrate that because, well, as you all know, this is very different. Uh, living in a monastery is also, in a sense, easier. It has hardship, but um, that's also one of the reasons, I guess, in all religions, uh, people created this uh, secluded hermitage because it is easier. All the distractions are gone and you can just pursue your, your calling. So, um, yeah. And then, um, the Euro tribe now is kind of the, the, um, final 
bringing it all together, what I found on, on my journey from, from my perspective and to, to share it with the tribe and with the community. That's a profound and story. Camilla, what about you? Yeah, uh, so good. Yeah. Uh, and well, mine is also very different to Sasha's and as well, um, also Joanna has a very uh, different background and that maybe makes it so unique as well on how we bring this tribe together and what we can also offer to people who are joining us and, and yeah, working or spending time with us is, well, my background um, is that I come from a family where... Uh, I always felt like, oh, I have to become a um, successful business uh, woman and as well a uh, mother of kids and family and I don't know, handling it all. <laughs> and um, and I was always feeling that I would need to kind of please as well what maybe my parents had in mind for my path. It's never, it was never that way that they really kind of pushed it on me, but there was just this you know, feeling or being conditioned that way. And so I, uh, I loved traveling and I loved languages and I thought like, okay, how can I bring that all together? And so, well, why not, um, studying hotel management, working in the hotel industry, that is kind of a career that is accepted by the family as well as I can uh, travel and experience the world. And so I pursued that uh, career and I uh, was then, when we met in Vietnam, I uh, worked for a five-star five hotel as a restaurant manager, um, but I noticed that I was really unhealthy and unhealthy uh, while being in Vietnam. I worked six days a week, nine to 16 hours. And I really, like there was this morning where I kind of typed into Google how to be happy like I just didn't know anymore how that feels or if I'm happy or what am I supposed to do here <laughs> and um, that's what opened up um, the door doors for me and opportunities like Sasha and Joanna coming along and showing me a different perspective and yeah making this decision to tap into the unknown and go a different direction <laughs> I love how the universe brings us together at the right time. It sounds like that's exactly who you needed and what you needed at the time you needed it. Yeah, right. Yes. So what is yeah, I... this journey? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you <laughs> off there, Sasha. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's a really good question. The, the euro's journey, I would describe it as, um, well, um, Joseph Campbell, who, where this term originates from, um, he was, um, looking into all kinds of religious texts, um, epics of Greek origins and, and, and of all the literal, um, heritage of the world and, uh, found out that there is a certain pattern in it. And that's kind of the origin of the hero's journey. And nowadays, uh, like we uh, apply it to, to personal development, to life in a sense. And I would say the hero in this hero's journey is the archetypical human. It's the, the mother archetype of the human. Doesn't matter what gender it's, it's always, we are the hero, but we, and, and that signifies and, and tells us we have this unlimited potential we can bring so much um freedom and joy and liberation into the world but most people are the reluctant hero um the hero's story tells us or the hero's journey tells us we are never outside of the story but we can be stuck in one of these positions one of the steps of the hero's journey and especially I would argue most of the world is stuck in the status quo. That's the first step of the hero's journey. And then things are boring, painful, um, so comfortable that we don't want to move out of it. So that is this the reluctant hero who feels there is so much potential, but the call to adventure is still not strong enough to be answered. And then what are some subsequent steps? in the journey? Um, well, we always say like, um, whoever that is, the universe, God, our own self, 
is constantly trying to help us and lift us out of the status quo. It's, it's sometimes even too much. In my personal life, it feels like um, the universe is like constantly trying to help us and get us out of that step with everything it does and gives us. But we are just so reluctant and, and kind of marinated in our conditioning that we refuse to call. That's step number three. So there's the call to adventure, step number two. And step number three is already inbuilt. We will refuse to call. It's, it's kind of, it tells us that is human nature. We will refuse to call. The problem then is only how often are we doing that and how long are we circling in this loop of the call? Because one rule is the call to adventure gets louder and harder. So the typical example would be like, I don't feel so well in, in my day-to-day -day life. And I am reluctant to look into it. Is it nutrition? Is it energy levels? Is it sleep? Whatever. And then this, this grows and the next knock on my door, it's, um, some kind of little illness or whatever. And if we keep ignoring that, we all know what happens. It gets stronger. And at a certain point, it's something that manifested as something that is hard to gain, hard to deal with. So the, that would be the next kind of chapter in the story. And you can see that in many movies, there's always this, this loop of I'm answering the call, refusal of the call. We just watched a movie the, the other day and there was this, this loop. For us, it was almost too long. Then it becomes really annoying when you watch like the first hour of the movie and it's always refusal of the call. The hero is refusing, refusing. And then innerly, you feel like, come on, just do it. Go on the journey. Pursue the uncomfortable. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. So can that when our interest is piqued and we want to see what the Hero Tribe has to offer, uh, your website is beautifully designed, by the way. It has many options. How can we engage with you? Yeah, there are uh, different ways in engaging with us. Um, so one is to, yeah, checking out our website uh, where you will also find a link uh, to our book. Uh, we published the Hero's Handbook. Uh, which is a guide to yeah bringing again this heroic um, mindset into your life, also with some practical um, exercises how you can apply it to your status quo, your situation that you're in right now. And um, then also there is the option we have um, every first Wednesday of the month we have a event called Tribe Time. It's a free. Uh, community gathering, how we call it, around the virtual campfire, because we have uh, people joining us from all around the world. And um, that's a wonderful way to tap into 90 minutes of connecting with the hero's journey. We give some uh, key notes um, talk that can inspire your journey, as well as some Qigong and also sharing to connect with other people around the world. And um, then we have our camps. Where, um, we have the Spirit of the Hero camps. Uh, the next one is taking place, place in Italy um, this August, uh, two weeks. And there we really immerse uh, into the hero's journey. So it's a 12-day uh, journey. And so the hero's journey that we're working with has 12 steps. So you will go through all the steps with us and get a real boost on your path. And also we have some online uh, programs um, for people to uh, be mentored uh, through three to six months on their personal journey. That's a lot of options. I love it. So if we're just curious and friends, all of these links are in the show notes. So make sure you click these links and check out the website and the many opportunities they offer. But if you're a little bit curious, maybe sign up for a tribe time on that first Wednesday or read the book. Uh, and then I think it would be amazing to set aside a week and go to Italy. Uh, I don't know if I can swing that this August or not, but these camps sound really profound, life-changing type experiences. And there's always the online mentoring as the next step as well. So there are a lot of ways to engage with you in this material. I just in speaking with you and the time that we have had together, even before the podcast, 
I can see the ins I can feel the inspiration in your voices and in our conversations. There's just this peacefulness with you. So I can tell that it would be a real profound experience to to engage with you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Melissa. <laughs> and we would love to have you in one of the camps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna look into it for sure. So uh, tell us a little bit about Joanna. With her permission, of course, I know she's not here to defend herself, but I trust that you would represent her well. Uh, she brings a different set of skills and backgrounds to the tribe also. Yeah, I'm sure she will give us her permission. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Joanna is, um, we, we always describe it, she has this uh, very uh, polar, um, opposites in her background. She um, was always a movement practitioner as well. She has a 10-year um, educational period in, in Oriental dance, for example. Um, but what then came along in her life was um, the call to study. And she studied um, environmental science and um, landscape ecology and um, really got into the, into university and, um, into, yeah, scientific, um, mindset of, um, everything that is not like measurable and provable right now is not allowed in a sense. And, um, at the same time, she still had that, that other side lingering in her and, um, um, we, we traveled a lot uh, together and, uh, one thing um, that happened in Australia, we met uh, one of our mentors, Tony Riley, um, and she opened up a, a completely different world to us as well, something that I haven't experienced in my martial arts training. And for Joanne, it was really like her call to adventure to pursue her intuitive side again. And then uh, she was drawn to, to shamanism and, and found a mentor back in Europe. And that created a lot of friction because um, her very much scientifically conditioned mind, the part of her psyche, had problems with that, obviously. And so that's kind of a special flavor, in a sense. Uh, she also um, gets along really well with the rational people that we work with. We had scientists who went through our programs, for example, and... Um, uh, there is an interesting touch point with Joanna then. Um, and she can be really, really rational and straightforward. But at the same time, she is doing shamanic ceremonies in the river and um, at the fire in our camps. And for us as well, this is always like an amazement to see um, these two sides. And um, she's really good at, at bringing them together to create kind of one coherent Joanna. I identify with that so much. I was a biologist. Uh, I oh. studied genetics. I was a lab rat, and that's what I did. I did research and worked in a lab. Um, the Human Genome Project was just getting off the ground, and I was in a lab that was working on part of that. And I had a different calling in life that just wouldn't let me go. And here I am now, but I find that having that science background and this living by faith pursuit, they really uh, give a unique insight. So I really love her story and the, it's not a struggle really, it's a complementarianism that the two provide that makes a unique journey. So I love that. I think it's also something that then completes two, two halves into a whole. In a sense, I would say everyone should learn some of this discernment of that science is supposed to apply. Um, very often it's not, but it's supposed to do that. And, and at the same time, the openness of, of spiritual living, of, of being open to faith in whatever uh, way. Yeah, and I think, you know, my biggest message is that the two are not opposite. They are not opposed to each other. They complement one another. They're two sides of the same coin. 
we can work on both. We can pursue both and honor both. Uh, an example I like to give, uh, we had a, a chemical plant in the town where I live that it had an explosion. And what I like to ask people when they're struggling with these things is if there was a physicist and a poet that both witnessed the event and they wrote about it, would their writings be the same? Of course not. Does that mean one of them is wrong? Of course not. It's yeah. two experiences of the same event. And even within ourselves, and I think this is part of the hero's journey, is finding those disparate, separate parts of ourselves and how they work together to propel us forward. Mm. But I'm still in that resisting the call a lot of times. <laughs> As we close today, what would you like to leave with the listeners? What thoughts would you like them to wrestle with and to consider in their own lives? But uh, for me, if you are now as a listener, kind of um, feeling like you are in your status quo and it's like like the first time that you even heard about the hero's journey, I can just uh, really recommend to you how to look at it and consider how does it show up in your life right now, especially if you have some sort of feeling that... May it change in whatever area of my life what interests me or I feel some sort of calling. And then to, yeah, check out the, the, the hero's journey. Because for me, I uh, also was afraid of like the unknown, as I guess everyone <laughs> is. And, and then I learned about this concept. And in a way, it gave me uh, a roadmap. So... By just came, taking it, okay, these are the steps and I can see it in all the stories and movies that I'm watching and also seeing it in my personal life as, a, as well in the lives of my friends. It's like, okay, these steps are on this journey. So if I now want to apply it for, for example, for searching for a new job, okay, this is what I can prepare for. After maybe refusing the call, then, okay, I have to take courage to go to the next step. And then I will meet a mentor. This could be a new colleague or it could be my boss or it's a book or so. And then I take this job and yes, I'm going to meet friends, allies, but also enemies. And, uh, but it will propel me farther on this journey and I will get through the circle and it will be a new, better stance call. And it really helped me uh, taking away a bit this um fear of the unknown because i thought okay i just take these steps and this is going to happen and so i have faith on my path and everything will be new better exciting thank you for that and sasha do you have any last words for us well as we were talking about the fear aspect and also uh two sides of the same coin um, something that that we also experience uh, definitely with ourselves, but with the people that we work with um, during the journey is uh, reluctancy. There is sometimes this in the imagery of the hero's journey. We want to run back to the village, um, and the, it's it's very important to always remind us that um, the the dragon and the treasure, those are two parts of the same coin. You cannot get to the treasure without facing the dragon, uh, the, the dragon inside of you. And, and that, I guess, is very often then we see the dragon or we even anticipate it. We just have fear about, yeah, concerning the fear that might come up in the future. And we think that, oh, it's not worth it. Uh, there, there will be another way around. Maybe I just take the detour and I eventually we will arrive at the treasure, but there is no other way. And that's also beautiful because we kind of have to, we have to fight the dragon, um, then acknowledge the dragon and make friends with the dragon, become the dragon, transmute the dragon, transform it, and we are the treasure. And that's, that's just a beautiful story. And then kind of an obvious question I have then is, how do we know when we have completed the journey? It's a really good question. And, uh, no one ever asked that before, to be honest. 
Um, yeah, I would say um, one thing we we never complete the journey. Yeah, so I, the, the hero's journey is um, we always call it like the onion. Um, when you peeled off one layer, there's the next layer, and it it never stops. It just gets more profound and more beautiful, like Camilla said. And I guess also the moment where it starts to be very comfortable and normal again. Uh, I guess it's this moment where, I don't know, I still remember how I got my driver license. That was such an exciting thing. Like, you know, first time speeding up on the autobahn, I don't know, driving 120 <laughs> but, <laughs> or more, as we are now to in Germany. Um Wow, you know, my heart was beating and I just thought like, wow, this is so cool. And well, now it's it's an autopilot. It doesn't really excite me anymore. It's just normal. And same when you are getting a new job. At some point, you are just so familiar with your surrounding and what you're doing. I guess that's the point where you are back in a status quo, a new status quo. And, and soon you will notice, oh, there's another desire coming up. Will I go on another hero's journey? And sometimes they come kind of back to back and you think, oh no, I, I thought I went through it now and I can just relax a little bit. But no, there is another adventure waiting. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it living. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you both so much. And again, if you're listening to this podcast, click the links, check out the book. Engage in a tribe time and maybe book a trip to a camp. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Melissa.